Are you ready to discover who you came here to be? Welcome to the Human Design and Astro Club podcast. Human Design is a system and a tool that is here to empower you and show you your greatest potential. Come learn with us and discover who you really are. Hi friends, Crystal here. New year and new you, and boy, do we have some new tools for you to help you transform your life into the one you have always dreamed of. We have some new ways for you to connect with us over outside of the show. So we have a free guide on tips and tricks to honoring your strategy and authority. We also have a language manual to your true self to help you understand the key terms in human design and how to apply them to reading your human design chart and also to your life. And we are so happy to announce doors are now open for the cosmic community, which is a no commitment or five month commitment package to connecting with us over in our private Facebook group. You will have the chance to connect with Leah and myself each month with our premium episodes through our program plus monthly forecast. There's also weekly aura energy updates, weekly tarot card polls connected to a human design gate, monthly market shares for fellow entrepreneurs to share their work and exclusive bonus content you will not be getting anywhere else from us. Come join the cosmic community to understand how to utilize the transits to your advantage and have a safe space to learn, grow, and connect. And we also have our children's class called Nurture Your Child Through Their Design. And our most popular classes are our variable mini classes, which are bite-sized, self-paced audios and guidebooks on the first two transformations. And if you want to stay connected with some education and love from us, join our email list and check out our website, which you can find that and every offer I just discussed down below in the show notes. Thank you so much for being here, and I will see you over on our next episode. Welcome to the Human Design and Astro Club podcast. I'm Crystal. And I'm Leah. And this is the podcast you've been waiting for. And there's no music. There's no music this time because this is a bonus episode. Well, again. You weren't expecting to see us twice this week or hear us if you're not on YouTube, if you are on YouTube. Hello, YouTubers. This is going to be an educational episode. And if you're new here, welcome. We're so happy you found us. We are a podcast of a bunch of weirdos. And that's the nutshell version of all of this. Basically, we have a bit of a passion for human design, astrology, and tarot. And we know the thread that runs through them. I've been studying and I've been in my experiment with this for almost six years now, Leah, around three, three years, three years, Mm -hmm. something like that. Um, And so I also worked at the Kabbalah center for three and a half years before that and what led me to human design. And so I do have a lot of education and a lot of information. I'm a one, three sacral generator. Leah, you want to tell everybody what you are? We haven't done it in a while. I know it's been a while. I'm a two, four splenic projector. So we're, we're, we're different, but we share the, um, channel of surrender together. That's our friendship channel. And that's what brings us together. And we merge each other, a lot of each other's splits. Mm -hmm. So where I'm open, Leah is defined and where Leah is (laughs) defined, I'm open. The only place that we're completely open when we're together is our solar plexus, which actually works out because then nobody hides the truth. We tell each other, you embarrassed me, (laughs) you made me feel bad, 
You made me angry. <laughs> and then we talk about it. You're, you annoyed the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we try to keep it real. Mm-hmm. Um, you get to see it in the cosmic community. Um, so, so yeah, we wanted to bring a lot of you guys' questions and give you some answers. I mean, we just had Jupiter go into gate 17, which is the gate of opinions. One of the questions that somebody asked, um, and I know this is a question that a lot of projectors ask. So we're going to make it very uh, general. And that's what we're going to try to do. There's a bunch of questions that were kind of similar to. So we're going to kind of try to stick to those themes of those types of topics. And we'll kind of see what happens. And this is also something that we want to do more regularly, depending on the time in the month, but we'll just say w- more regularly, not saying that this is going to be a weekly or bi-weekly or monthly thing. Mm-hmm. It'll just, I don't even know the last time we did a Q and a, so that's how not regularly this is. <laughs> <laughs> We're undefined roots, so we can't tell you exactly when anything is going to happen either. So no, but once I see people start asking questions and when, once I, we, we've actually put this question form out for the last couple months now and then mm-hmm. gathering questions from you guys. So this is something like when we just say, do you guys have questions? Fill out the form so that we can come on here and answer them for you. And and again, a lot of people have very similar types of questions. So people often say to me, like, I feel stupid asking this question. There's no stupid question. Nope. It, you'll just, you know, you won't get your answer at all if you never ask. So <laughs> So let's dive in to these questions. Um, the first one, we're going to keep it to an opinion-based question um, because there's not really a clear-cut answer. This isn't like this is this is um, a relationship type question. <laughs> so know that there's probably many different ways to go about this. Um, this is just a way that. Leah's maybe experienced because I'm not experienced with being a projector. I can give my unbiased opinion on the outside. Mm -hmm. Um, So we'll see what comes with that. But I'll let Leah go first with this. So we had somebody, we had a projector ask, um, can I make a choice not to be bitter? Um, Or is this, am I just like, it's basically, am I kidding myself for for thinking that I cannot be bitter when I'm feeling bitter, which means that you weren't recognized, right? As a projector, usually bitterness comes from not being recognized. Leah, you can chime in here and, and tell me if there's another way that bitterness also comes in for you, because that might be a good uh, addition to this question. Um, and then also, I guess let's start with that. There's this is kind of there's a few parts to this question. So let's it's start multi-layers. with multi-layers. If there's multi layers, we'll keep diving. So we'll start with the beginning. Beginning question is: Can you make a choice not to be bitter? Um, so the first, when you, I didn't have that answer to that question when we were discussing this before. But now that I'm thinking about it, I think the choice to not be bitter is like recognizing the other person where they're coming from. And like, yes, there's like the whole not self thing, which is you know everybody has their own. Um, not self theme. So we're always going to feel some of that with other people because relationships, you know, we're going to butt heads or, you know, people say something or we see something on TV or, you know, whatever interaction that we have in the outside world, we're going to feel something from that. And I think the, the choice to not feeling bitter maybe is like, what is the other person experiencing or where is that information coming from? Um, And just understanding the other side of it. So um, I would say for me, it's not so much that I'm ever going to not be bitter because it could come in a wave of a moment. It could come just for me being mad because, you know, I didn't get to do my workout because the guy came today and dropped off a bunch of pellets. Like that's something I can be bitter Yeah, I was bitter at him, but like, it didn't make any sense for me to be bitter. Like, you know, things are, it's out of my control, you know? So, well, it usually, I think what I've noticed for the not self is that it usually shows up when there's some sort of resistance Mm -hmm. of some kind clashing with our, our vehicle in some sort of way. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and there was another one I had, but I lost it. But I, yeah, it's it, it's in it, or it's usually where we, um, I'll say I'll speak for myself as a generator where I tried to initiate. For me, that's usually for myself yeah. when I notice that the frustration comes in, um, or I'm trying. Yeah, when I'm trying, like when I'm in also like a generator plateau, and I'm like, but we're gonna keep going anyways. Mm-hmm. I'm then I it's like when you face resistance, whether it be with, for projectors, I feel like a lot of it is relationship parts with, with the way you guys experience the bitterness because Because that's how we work. Yeah. Because you see the other, the other Mm -hmm. doesn't this, and you don't understand the way the other sees you. It's like, if you really, for projectors, if I could give a little (laughs) advice just from work, I've worked with so many, like, it's just extremely important that you have people in your corner that see you because yeah. you you only see yourself through other people. You have to remember the type of aura that you are. Your aura is focused and absorbing, right? So how in the world can you, and like I say, you didn't see that about yourself? Oh no. It's like, we're, it's like, there's just like this blinder on and I'm like, what is happening? And also she's a second line. So it just makes things a little bit more <laughs> foggy. <laughs> yes. I don't know. Yeah, it does. But it's like, I'm like, how do you guys truly not see this part about yourself? And for some projectors, I'm not saying it, de- it, it really depends. And it depends on, again, I think the people that you probably have in your corner, because the people that you have in your corner are going to give you the right proper feedback about you. So then you can use that be like, Oh, I guess you keep saying the same thing, repeating of the way people see you. Maybe there is something there or having people that you can talk to about. What are you like really asking them? Like, what do you think about me in this like situation or whatever, or about me with doing this or whatever it is? Because when you almost like invite them into your aura, then you give yourself a chance to be recognized. And then that can remove some bitterness. But there's always, we're, we're, I think the answer to this question, and this go, could go for any of the types, is you're always going to face the not self. Mm-hmm. You just are. Doesn't people say like, oh, when I finally have deconditioned, you're, are you living and breathing? <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be deconditioning your whole life. Now, the first seven years, if you like really dive in deep, you're removing like those really like uh, sticky spots of your not self that are finally able to be removed. But you're, con- I mean, you're constantly taking in the neutrino stream from the transits. You're being conditioned by them. If unless, I mean, it, you could be living alone, but you're still being conditioned by the transits mm-hmm. no matter what. So you're always being conditioned, even if you're not around people, but if you're around people, you're definitely getting conditioned. Yeah. Hopefully that kind of answers the question. It's, it's hard to say one thing because like I, the way I feel better about things is going to be different than anybody else because of our past, because of our charts, you know, because of our authority or something, you know, so there's, there's, it's very complex if you try and dive too deep into it, but I think the surface is like, I mean, you can talk yourself out of it if you want to. Sure. Mm -hmm. Like that's totally possible. It's like, why are you bitter? What are you bitter about? What made you yeah, bitter? I guess if you start diving and removing the layers, you'll realize the truth mm-hmm. and that it's really just a projection that you needed to experience to hopefully decide to look at yourself in the mirror and where where can you potentially improve? Obviously the other could too. If, yeah. if they really did make you feel bad and that could be a conversation to have, it's also important to know, are you, um, single definition, split definition, triple split or quadruple split the type, the way your relationship dynamic is going to go is going to be very different for both of you. If you, if you both have separate definitions, mm-hmm. like I have, and there's an episode about this all the way down, down, down at the beginning where we talk about definition. Uh, do not know what episode that is, but we do have a beginner's path 
over on our website. If anyone's listening to this, it is a really fantastic beginner's path. And we'll, we'll, we'll get into that in just a moment also, because somebody asked a question about that. So we'll answer it there. But that episode is in, um, we have educational episodes in the beginner's path. If you go to the homepage, you'll see beginner's path, click there. And then on that entire um, landing page, you will find um, all of our educational podcast episodes. So, so yeah, so it really would depend on the definition. My husband is single definition. I'm split definition. And he could give two fucks. (laughs) (laughs) He could give two fucks if I, if I like sometimes need to like talk out our, our problems because he's doing just fine over there on his own. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it's not necessarily because, you know, men don't want to talk. And then there's times that he's like, oh, I really, really fucked up here. And then he doesn't leave me alone. So, and he has the, he has the gate of extremes. So it's like, you never really know. But when it comes to him like functioning on day day to day or like being able to go do things, he can just do all those things on on his own. And I've realized for myself, a lot of times I do need a partner. And so it's important to know that if you do have a romantic partner or even a platonic partner that you live with that have has different definition than you to know that you both are going to be operating differently. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good episode. Helpful too for relationships and stuff. So definitely yeah. check it out. I wish I had the number. It's on. Yeah, just if Scroll it's back. on, it's definitely on the uh, uh, um the beginners page. So okay. I would go look there. And so, what would you say? Because there was another layer to this question was mm-hmm. what what would you say when it comes to being in a relationship as a projector and having them say give you unsolicited advice that you were, you didn't ask for, you didn't invite them into. Um, and how do you, how do you deal with that as being a projector? Mm -hmm. Well, I am married to an emotional generator. So there's often things that ideas and things that he comes up with that I never thought of before. He's also an open head and there's a lot of other things that stream down and he gives me a lot of ideas and I just take them and I say, thank you. And I take into consideration the ones that like do feel good for me that I really want to do. And, or that like my, cause I'm defined heart, like, do, do I want to do that? And do I have time to do that? Or And then I consult my authority and I also see, you know, like, what is it that makes sense for me to do? And is that really on my path of what I want to do? Is it something that is, you know, would help advance me in my businesses or is it just, you know, a simple suggestion? Um, There's nice though. And how would you, and how would you talk to another projector? about that, Mm. knowing how you operate. I know that each projector and depending Mm. on your definition is different, but again, when it comes to invitations, recognition, and bitterness, how would you talk to that other projector? See, I I don't know if I've come across a projector that has, well, I mean, maybe. I feel like I'm open to have the conversation because, or I ask them, you know, a question back, like, I don't know if they say something, just ask them a question like, where did that come from? Or can we talk about this more and like maybe open myself up for the conversation as far as it being like hits home or like hits personally? Um, I don't know if I off the top of my head have any like examples of how I dealt with that specifically um, other than just having the conversation and then just seeing where it goes and allowing myself to sit with it too after like even if the conversation is over allow myself to think to myself like how does that feel and where is that coming from does it make me feel better like do i need to work on something that is coming up there like is there an old wound or some sort of trigger or trauma that comes up when they bring up that topic and if there is and i feel open to having that conversation more with them saying i realized you know that you said this thing to me and this is how it made me feel. And this is kind of where I think it's coming from. And I, maybe I need to think on it more and I appreciate your observation of me or something like that. And then, you know, how can, how can I work on things? Um, 
as far as it being in a a personal re- relationship, I don't have any, my youngest is the projector. So I don't have any like, and all of my like sisters and siblings are generators. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't have any like really close people um, that are projectors. So I, you know, it would have all been a friend or somebody um, which before three years ago, I wouldn't have known their design. And I think right now I only have a couple close friends who are projectors and they're very kind to people. So I don't have like a, a good bitterness type of bitterness to any sort of thing. Yeah. 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 Um, but I think what you said there with asking them a question back, almost like inviting them to give you more feedback so that you can have a better understanding. And if you're an emotional projector, I mean, obviously then you're going to need to sit with that conversation you just had. And maybe this Mm -hmm. would be a good time to maybe journal your thoughts and feelings and then come back to it like a week later and be like, and read it again. And then be like, do I still feel this way? Or do, do I now have more information? Has my wave moved? So it all depends. And that could also go for emotionals in different types as well. Like having conversations, those hard conversations and then writing it out and then sitting with it because you really don't know in the moment. There's no Mm -hmm. clarity or in the now for an emotional. So we did have another very basic question that um, I actually get this in DMs a lot too. So I figured, okay, we need to talk about this. So where do I start? (laughs) As a newbie, like if people ask me this question a lot, we got this question in this form, where do I start as a newbie? So as I just said just before, for us, we've made this very streamlined for people because I get this question a lot and it's a question, just a general question that everybody has when they first put in their information in a body graph calculator, that weird body pops up with all the triangles and boxes and (laughs) this weird diamond colored in or not. And you're like, what is that? And so then you go, well, where do I go next? And so we decided we were going to make this easier for you guys. And it's been a long time since we've said this. And we're also, we've just moved websites, website hosts. So we are continuing to add and redo stuff. So know that things are growing and expanding on our website, but we did make a very, very in-depth beginner path for people that we had on our last website. Maybe you saw it, but if you go to our homepage, go to humandesignastro.com, go to the homepage, scroll down just a tiny bit, you'll see um, us pop up where we say, are you new to human design? Click the beginner path. Are you more um, intermediate or advanced? Click the intermediate or advanced path. And so the beginner path, it'll give you um, a body graph calculator that we suggest because it's the one that we use. (laughs) We use genetic matrix because it literally has everything. And it also combines human design and astrology and a whole bunch of different types of charts you can pull up that honestly you cannot find anywhere else. So we do have a link to that if you go to our homepage. And then we also have um, a free guide. Um, I actually got a question in a DM actually earlier today saying, um, what is this this type with this authority? And I was like, oh, I was like, I we have a free guide with that mm-hmm. authority there. So this is it. And that's usually everyone's first question is how do I because I you know it's nailed home to us from the beginning, strategy authority, strategy authority, right? So we created a free guide to make it very simple for you guys. So if you're trying to figure out how to understand your strategy and authority, we have a free guide. Um, on the beginner's path that you can find through our homepage. And then we also have a lot of educational episodes just on um, the centers, the authorities, um, definition that we just talked about. We have a whole bunch of different educational episodes. We just gave you guys a bunch of free stuff Mm -hmm. and you could just put it all together if you want. That is on in the beginner's path as well. And then we also have a user manual and that would be the next step is starting to understand like where the pieces fit. Like I'm looking at my body graph. What does it mean to have 
all these black lines? What does it mean to have all these red lines? What do the centers actually mean? How can I use them? What is a magnetic monopole? Like we have all those questions answered for you. And that's really the next steps that I would go is starting to get into the education. Now, the easiest way to do that is just to go get a reading. If you go get a reading, you get to watch how the foundations are built inside of you, the mechanics of you. And then also when I do readings, I also do readings. And when this episode comes out, I might not have any more space in March, I'm I'm hoping because I'm ready to close my books. I keep having get I I've gotten like five DMs saying I want a reading. Just book it already. I want to <laughs> want to close my books for March. Um, but if they're still open, hey, you can book you can book my last spot, and then I'm closing my books. They only have one one more. Excuse me one more opening for March. So that would be, that's where I started. I'll tell you where I started. I found out my human design. I knew a bunch of stuff about Kabbalah, but I had no idea what any of these centers meant. Mm -hmm. I had no idea really what it meant to be a generator. And so I got a reading and I got basically all the foundations of what I needed to know just from that reading and then I started doing classes. We have a lot of other classes on our websites on our website as well. And um, started getting also, I, I would definitely recommend getting like all, any source material that you can find and where you can find source material that I, I like supporting is Human, De- Human Design America, humandesignamerica.com. If you go there, they have all of uh, like Raw's um lectures that they've condensed into books. Um, a lot of audios are on there as well. That's usually where I get a lot of my education stuff on there. Um, like I read here, if you're on YouTube right now, I'll tell you my two favorite books. <laughs> this is what I recommend in readings and it's what I use. And yeah, that's not it. Oh, wait, they're over there. Hold on. Hold on. I thought they were here. Give me a second. I had put them on my meditation bed. Um, so this is my favorite book and this is what I would recommend first for anybody that's trying to understand what the gates mean, um, is the complete rave I Ching. And the reason why I love it is because not only does it show you what all the gates are, shows you what all the astrological signs that are connected to the gates are. It shows you just like in order one through 64, where you don't have to worry about what, you know, like what circuit do they belong to? Like, you know, it's just very straightforward. Um, And then it gives you a description that's definitely from Ra's voice. This is definitely, they're pulling these from, from lectures and then all the lines um, and what each of them are, the incarnation crosses they're associated to it. So it's just, it's got everything jam packed in in a simple place. I'll say that it is. I will say, I would probably get a reading first and take some classes that to give you a, a better understanding of what all that means because you know it's from Ra and he does speak gibberish. Unless you understand gibberish, I do. He merges both of my he mer, or he merged. I guess I mean still technically he's merging them when I hear his voice. He merges both of my splits. So it, to me, it's I'm the Riddler with him um, and I get it. But if if you and some people also don't like his voice, I've heard from people. I've heard that a, quite a few times and I'm like, I don't mind his voice. It is a little weird. Um, but he had the chan- genius to freak channel. So, <laughs> so I, I get it. <laughs> so I get it. Yep. So, so yeah, so those are the two books I would recommend, but what I would was, say, what was the other one? Oh, the Ray body graph cir- circuitry. This okay. is really good. If you're kind of like, you kind of got a, a little bit of an understanding of the gates, a little bit understanding of the channels, but you want to understand the more the mechanics and how they all fit together. Um, it's a lecture broken down by all the circuits and what they mean. So, 
So yeah, I like those two books. There's a bunch of other books. Obviously, the, the definitive book of human design that could be mm-hmm. overwhelming for a newbie though. So that's why we made our user manual to your true self because yeah. it's all the source material condensed into a very simple format where you we've got images connected to key um the keywords, key phrases, the language, whatever they are, the key terms. They're all, and may, we, we've made it pretty simple and we're also in the process of updating it. So if you do buy it now, I'll tell you, uh, you're going to get more, you're going to get more than what you're, you're seeing there. And you'll be locked in at that price. Cause there, I am going to be going through stuff more in depth and changing a bunch of stuff out that I will say, I'm not sure until we get there. I'm a third line and I'm a sacral being. I won't know until the now. And I just feel like depending on how much work my heart has to put out as a defined heart, um, it'll tell me how much it's worth after that. So I won't know until after that. Um, but if you have already purchased, you're locked in. We 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 like to keep people grandfathered in at the price they purchased and you don't have to purchase again to get the information. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's those are the places that that I would start and that would be the order that I would go through if 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 you've been following us for a while um so what else what other questions did we have we did have we had a couple um unconscious conscious types of questions that were asked right yes so like we could do that one next okay um and we're we're probably going to only go for a little bit longer. So any questions that we don't answer um, or if we didn't answer your question, it doesn't mean that we're not going to. We're going to do this again, like we said. Mm-hmm. So we'll look through some of these questions and we'll ask you guys again before we do this so we can get a fresh, a fresh set. And also it helps us like if people do ask similar questions, then we know that that's a, a topic that you guys do want to know about. So that's yeah. why we're going to talk about this one next with the unconscious and conscious parts of human design. So we had a few people ask about what's the difference between the unconscious and conscious. So the unconscious is the red part, the red lines and the red boxes that are on the left-hand side of your chart. If you're looking at the left-hand side of your chart, you'll see a bunch of red boxes. And then if you look in the middle of your chart and you see the body graph, you'll see a bunch of red lines that are either hanging, meaning they only have half of that frequency. Um, there's only half of the line and the rest on the other side is white. That's considered a hanging gate. Or you have the full unconscious channel, just a full red line running through from center to center. That would make a full channel that would then light up both of those centers. When you have a full channel, it lights up opposite ends of those centers. So the unconscious was 88 days before you were born. This is really what gives the holistic part of of human design because it's what gives us the quantum self. Um, So for example, astrology is connected to the conscious part of you. So if you see the black boxes or you see the black lines, that is the conscious part of you. And that's actually connected to astrology. Okay. The conscious part of you is connected to astrology. That's the parts that are moving. That's connected to the transits. So you might have conscious parts of you hanging that are connected to the conscious parts running through the transits, which makes us part of the whole collective that's coming from the personality, black boxes and lines of your chart. The red is really what we do don't understand about ourselves. The red part of our design is really the way that other people see us. They can see these parts of our unconscious more clearly because it's connected to our body. It's, it's, and it's all, it's like these weird quirks. A lot of times that we have that people will tell us about and be like, I don't know, but they (laughs) see, they see it in us. So Mm -hmm. the unconscious is really connected to the way other people see you. And really what I believe, this is for for me personally and something that I've been experimenting with is the place that you need to honor the most. If you can lean into and honor and allow the body to um, take the front seat and allow them, they are the driver of our vehicle, the unconscious part of ourself, 
if we could allow the body to take the front seat, then the mind gets to just become the past, uh, the conscious passenger, passenger consciousness. We've heard about this topic. That's all coming from the mind, but we don't know how to do it because the mind thinks it's running the show. Our personality part is who we really think we are, but we are more than just our personality. We are more than just our astrology. There's this whole other unconscious part of ourselves that make that give us the holistic perspective of who we are. And so somebody also asked, like, what if you have the same gate or channel twice, like it happening in different planets, meaning that's what happens if it's twice, then you could have it in the same. A lot of times if you have like, like your unconscious Pluto in one gate, then the conscious Pluto will also be in that gate because the uh, those planetary um, activations are slower moving with the outer planets um, and it's generational. So a lot of times you might have the same planet in the same gate with those types of placements. Um, and sometimes it just happens. Um, like my unconscious, my unconscious South node and conscious South node are the same gates. I think just different lines. You see my chart actually. And, and yes. So, so yeah, so that just means that the flavor of that gate is going to be different in my unconscious than in my conscious. But I, that means that there's extra when it's unconscious and conscious it's gates or channels, there's extra emphasis on almost like that part of you that you are here to embody and also discover because no matter what we're still we're there's there is a growth to our definition but it's definitely more fixed obviously and slower moving than what the fluidity that could happen with the growth of our openness of our open centers that that even though that can maybe feel harder a lot of times you could you could work with that energy a little bit more because it there you can manipulate it you can't manipulate your definition yeah. really yeah. Um, unless it's conscious. Conscious is what you're really growing into. Your mm -hmm. unconscious is very fixed. You cannot move it. That's why I say if you can honor your unconscious and lean into it, then the conscious will be like, oh, I say give the mind a job. This is something that I've been saying more recently. And it's something that I've been working on with myself. And like, you know, I see the generator often as like the little dog that wants to behave and, mm -hmm. and like, you know, uh, give its master what it wants, you know? Yeah. And so my, the generator part of me is actually in my mind. My body is that of a reflector. And so my, I've realized that if I say, hey, mind, you know, you're so good at this. You got to give it, you got to pet it a little bit. It's part of our ego, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you're so good at this. You know, could you do me a favor, mind? Can you please start looking for these types of patterns? Because I know you're so good at it. And you let me know when you find it. And then we'll see what we can do from there. And then it goes, oh, okay, I can do that now. And so then it just starts looking. It's like, because it's the observer. Give it, it thinks that it has a job. It thinks it's in control. You know, it's like the boyfriend or your, your husband, for example. Um, <laughs> I picture it being like a golden retriever though. Like of any of it the is dogs. Definitely, the generator gold. is definitely a golden retriever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I need to add that to the kids, kids guidebook. Yeah. Yeah. That's another type, the golden retriever for the generator. That's what exactly the way I see it in my mind too, this like Yellow, long haired, yeah, ready to go. That's the fucking generator. Uh, especially you give it a job. Mm. Oh, well, we're ready to work. We are ready. You give it a job it's interested in, it's ready to work. Yep. So that's that's how you can kind of work with that energy and a little bit of more understanding of how it how it works. So give it a shot. Like I I I really um, you know, I I here's a way that I I I'll give you an example of how I honor my unconscious body. And this is actually connected to my body. So I think it, there's a lot of synergy here for me with this. Um, I wake up every morning and I immediately work out. I know for some people that sounds like hell. Leah just talked about <laughs> last the last episode that it turned into kind of a hellish, hellish situation because then she was committed to something she didn't really want to be committed to all the time. Yeah. For me, it's what starts my engine. 
I, I, um, really need to, my unconscious son is gate 46. So if I honor that place immediately in the morning, when I wake up, then it, it allows my body to come into flow. That's what it does. It goes into a flow state after where do you want to go next? Oh, here. Oh, I want to go over here. And so it's like, it allows me to surrender, surrender to the body. The mind will follow. Okay. Mantra to live by surrender to the body and the mind will follow. What do you think of that, Leah? I don't know if you've experimented as much with what I just um, said. I haven't experimented as much. And so I have, I'm, I'm both projector, but I have a, my splenic projector side. And then I have my personality side is the, um, what the heck? It's the self-projected, right? I believe. No, mental. So when I like I have to externalize a lot of things. So my my mom would call me an external processor in like therapy terms because I need to talk things out. And like when I talk things out, I feel so much better after the fact than I did before because I was just holding it all in. And I think that's one of the main things that I notice is like when I do talk stuff out, then I feel a lot better, even if it made no sense, just because I get all trapped up in my head. I get trapped way up here. Everything is defined. So it just all, I'll get stuck there regardless of, you know, me saying, oh, it's fine. It's fine. Everything's gonna be fine. It's like, it's not fine. You got to talk about it. And so that's one thing that I have tried better to be at tried to be better at, um, (laughs) is just, you know, talking about things. And so I think that's just one thing that I've been experimenting with. I'm sure as I keep going, I'll find more things, but that's the main thing for me. I think if you do have, so this is actually was another question. So we'll lead, we'll, we'll go into this and maybe we'll do maybe one more after this one. Um, so a question that actually somebody in our group asked in the cosmic community, and I'm some of these were mixed together between the two of them because people ask a lot of the same questions I realized. Mm -hmm. Um, It always happens. And so a common question that people ask, and we actually answered this on another podcast episode, was what's the difference if you have um, a type in your unconscious that's different in your also personality and also that your quantum self is a also a, a whole other type, which your quantum self is your type. Like, I want to be very clear. Some people have some confusion with this or like what to do mm-hmm. with it. And honestly, there's no real right or wrong per se, um, but I've found the best way. And I've found a way that I've helped other people with. And we actually talked about this on um, an episode with Kayla uh, a few episodes back. I can't remember what number it is or what it's, it's actually called. just looking. It's 103 episode. Okay. So episode 103, we talk about this with Kayla. Um, and I have a reflector body and a generator mind, as I was just saying. And I noticed, well, one thing I noticed was right before I rem- I'll never forget this right before I put my information into the chart calculator to find out that I was a generator. I was like, I'm a hundred percent like a non-sacral. I thought I was a projector. I was the only person probably in the entire world that wanted to be a projector. Um, and that's how you knew I wasn't. Um, but so obviously I turned out to be a generator, but when I saw that, I was like, "Hmm." I feel like that's not quite right. Cause I don't feel like a generator. I don't, I do not feel like a generator other than when my body gets going, I realize I can hold the consistency, but I have a reflector body. So I am honestly, if I look at it, I am whatever my mind is. My body is mirroring, mirroring my mind, but my reflector body does have a slower process than my mind does is what I realized. And so when I finally found out that there was, there could be a difference between your unconscious and conscious. And then I found out that it, there was a difference for me. I was like, oh, that makes way more sense. Mm-hmm. I was like, that makes yeah. way more sense. Cause I feel like my mind is always ready to go, which can often feel like with the mind, cause it does speak louder, but I notice it moves way faster than my physical body, like mm-hmm. way faster faster. And I do go through different 
speeds and spectrums of understanding throughout the month, I've also realized. So I started um, allowing myself, especially with us, and when I were, were creating classes or content of some some sort, I like to put it out a month ahead of time, or at least start talking about it a month ahead of time, because I know that it takes a while for people to also come into my flow. And so that's something that I started experimenting with and it has been helpful. Um, also with having an open throat, I think you, like you really have to pull yourself apart and then put it back together and see where do they all kind of like fit together. So being a reflector body, open throat, generator mind, like things don't happen at like a rapid speed is what my aura says. It just doesn't. And so I respect and honor that. And so I lean into, I also am very good at the transits. I have a very deep connection that makes no fucking sense to the transits on a very deep level. It keeps getting creepier as time goes. <laughs> <laughs> but having a reflector body, that totally makes sense. Yeah. Because I, I literally feel things before they come in. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's, I feel like also as a third line body, mm. um, I take a lot of hits before people have to. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of connection there with all of that. So yes, you can have a, a different unconscious, conscious or quantum self. Um, and it's important to lean. It's almost like allow the unconscious is what I've learned is to just allow the unconscious to be the guide. And then the conscious, whatever that type is, allow that to come in, um, figure out what are the patterns with that. So where they then come in, but it's like I said, if you honor the body, the mind will follow. It just will. It shouldn't really matter. Like a lot of like OGs don't really like this whole pulling it apart and trying to say you're a different type for other things. They're like, you're your quantum self. I'm like, you are, but you might have like a different process. And it might be tied into, like for me, it is tied into my reflector body. Like my process is a little bit like a 28 day cycle. And I've noticed that. And so I I started experimenting with that. So it could help you with understanding like where to start with experimenting to if you kind of see it, but it's not the first place I would initially start. I would start with strategy and authority. And then once you feel like you've got that down, then you can pull it apart a little more and be like, oh, there is a different side to me. Let me see what that, maybe can you remember back to a time that maybe you experienced that type or authority? Like for Lee, it's just two different authorities, right? It's still a projector. Yep. So it's like, well, where, where do you see yourself? Where do you see this role happening in your process is almost like the question to ask with that. So I hope that answered that question. And then what's the last one we should do? Yeah. Hmm. Um, well, we had the question on the manifesting generator. Oh yeah. Channels and the difference between like, um, a manifesting generator that has the channel directly to the throat or one that does not have one directly to the throat. Yeah. So there's, they're manifesting generators. First of all, they can be just confusing and just who they are because it's like, am I coming or going? I don't know. That's just, they don't know. <laughs> they don't know either. They don't know. They they have told me that they don't know either. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, that doesn't help me. So <laughs> <laughs> like my mom's a manifesting generator. So I just mm-hmm. think about her whenever I think about the manifesting generator. Yeah. Um, but so and she actually she does have the 2034, which is what makes you a pure manifesting generator. Mm-hmm. It is the only channel that is manifesting generated because the 34 is in the sacral and the 20 is in the throat. So that's what would make a manifesting generator. But there's also other types of manifesting generators. There's ones that are more generated, ones that would have um like a connection from the sacral. Um, all the way up to like the throat, maybe as an example, there could either be other parts or like they also have like this, the projected throat channels. I'm not going to get into all of them. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm not going into too much detail here, but I'm just giving examples. Like that would be a more generated manifesting generator. Like they have that manifested qualities from the throat, 
but that they're they're just directly connected to the sacral um as opposed to if on the other side those manifestor um throat channels the 1222 or uh, the 3536 those are manifested um throat channels and so if you have those two channels and then you have let's say like the 360 i'm just throwing something out here um that that would make you a more like you would have more manifested manifesting qualities as a manifesting generator because those are manifested channels meaning that what might happen just from what i've seen with working with all different types of manifesting generators is that their process could potentially look like i'm not saying that it is but to us the outsiders the generators as such as myself that is like how did you just do that <laughs> um <laughs> It might just look a little faster or they might be able to, once that sacral goes, yeah, then the, that manifested one will just be like, boom, you know, like the cheetah. Mm -hmm. I like to associate the manifestor with the cheetah. So theirs could look a little bit faster. And I have seen a more generate two actually, I know two more generated manifesting generators um, and they do it really has to come from that sacral. Like it really, like it needs to be like their deepest desire and then, and then they wait and then it'll come through. But it's with the manifested ones, like the 2034 or the 1222 or the 3536, those manifesting generators do make things happen. What appears to be, I'm just going to say what appears to be a little faster. Mm -hmm. to me. I don't know about you. So my, yeah, my daughter has the 45, 21, 21, 45, whatever direction yeah, you want it to go in. Yeah. And she is, I can't even like keep up. I can't, I wish I could keep up, but she's doing 60 million things. She's asking me 60 million things. And I'm like, girlfriend, like I'm still on the last thing that you just did over here. I'm like slow as heck. Yeah. And she's like, well, I asked you to do this. What about, and she remembers everything. Like it's, <laughs> it's hilarious. I'm like, I know you can do a lot of different things. And we have this discussion all the time. It's like, I know you can do a lot of things and I know you love to do a lot of things and you're done doing that thing. You want to do the next thing. You want to do the next thing really fast. All the, all of them all in a row. I can't keep up with you. So I'm telling you, I'm trying to support you and to do all of these things but I'm kind of slow. So you got to just be patient with me and I will keep up with you if I can, or I'll let you go and do your things. And like, you can go off and, you know, get crafty and do whatever you want to do. Cause you know, she's eight. So she's, it's not like she's trying to start new jobs, but she's definitely <laughs> like into all kinds of different things. And I, I love that she lo loves so many things. And I mm -hmm. think that's as a kid, like I'm just supporting her and having a million different like hobbies or like loving all kinds of stuff or just like doing sprints around the house. Cool. Yeah. Like go do it. And so it's really interesting to see that as opposed to like the generator or um, the projector where we're just kind of like, we're going, we'll get yeah, there. We're going at our own speed. Yeah. And she's like, idea, let's go now. And then you just, yeah. Then the manifest generator just a lot of times can just do that. Yeah. Like, I feel like you know, it's like the whole thing, like, don't like, don't make decisions from your mind. But what I've noticed, and this is just an observation, so don't come <laughs> for me. But <laughs> I've noticed with the manifesting generator in, in, in difference to myself, I'm like, they tend to have these thoughts that like the next day they can do. Mm -hmm. Or the next day it appears because the way the generators work is it needs to appear in our environment for us to respond to. Like people mm -hmm. really don't. And I want to start talking about this more. There's how much people don't understand what response means. Response means, for example, I wanted to get a new mic. How many times was I talking about it? Well, you know, I should probably get a new mm -hmm. mic. I should probably, mm -hmm. yeah, thinking about it. Oh, you got a new mic. Mm. Then I was like, I, I do, I do want a new mic, but then I had this other mic. It was working. It was still working. <laughs> and I was like, I don't love it. That's another thing you have to, you should be, I think generators really, it, we really do. I've realized how much we really do need to be loving our, our, our things, our items or anything in the, our environment really. And I was like, I don't really love this. And then it was so funny. 
uh, actually speaking of Kayla, we were just talking about her earlier. I was on a call with her one time, not that long ago. And I, I, and she's like, that is such a interesting mic. And I know she was like, you know, like, what is that? It looked like a spaceship. Um, and then the next day it broke. Yep. <laughs> and there then I go. responded. I had some, <laughs> then I finally had something to respond to. My, I was like, yeah, I could go get a new mic, but what, why this one yeah, works? This one's fine. But that one, it broke. I responded. And then I was thinking about this the other day. I was trying to figure out like um, a grocery list, but we had just eaten and my husband had just eaten. He's like, I can't, I don't know what I want. I'm, uh, I'm full. Mm-hmm. He had nothing to respond to because there was no, his, his belly was full. Mm-hmm. And he couldn't figure out what, what we could use because there was no, nothing motivating him to respond. There's nothing there. Yeah. So interesting. So we really, we really do like, even like, I was like, you know what I really need to do is make sure that even if I have like my to-do list that I'm put it as an alert in my phone so that I can respond. I'm like, I need it. Like, even if it's something so silly, like Mm. prepare, I put it a notification yesterday for me with an alert to prepare for this week's podcast. You can't just tell yourself you're going to write it down in your notebook. I was like, you need to put it at the time that you, you need to do it for so that you can respond at that time. Yeah. So I'm just like, you just always need to have something on the outside giving you something to respond to because you yeah. cannot respond to your thoughts. My father-in-law is a good example of that. He has a to-do list as well, but it has check boxes. And he's like, and sometimes I even add things on just so I can respond to it. He's yes. like, I went and took a shower and I wrote it on my to-do list and then I put a check. He's like, I'm mad. <laughs> I was like, that's perfect. That's all you want to be do. satisfied. We, yeah. we want it. All generators so want. Good. Let me give you a little tip, gents. <laughs> all we want, and I know this is all you want. We just want to finish things. We're That's the it. finishers. Yeah. We just want to be satisfied and what we just did. How are you satisfied if it's not complete? Mm-hmm. Right. We're never satisfied if it's not complete. And we just want consistency in the in that sort of sense of satisfaction. That's all we want. Consistency <laughs> and completion. Yeah. That's it. Very, the generators are very simple. I also, I'm going to end with this because you know I'm fucking weird and I like to say dark things that I think are funny. Um, oh, gosh. <laughs> we're in for a treat. <laughs> I was like holding on to this one for a while and it just came back around. So, you know how I like to like watch like murder mystery stuff? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, I haven't annoyed you about the one that. I only told you a few things, but I'm still watching all these ep- episodes on Brian Koberger. If you guys know who I'm talking about, I'm going to have to do something with him. I will, content will be made about this man because woo, all I have to say is I'm pretty sure most serial killers are manifesting generators. <laughs> and if there was one type that could get murdered the easiest, could you guess what type that would be? The easiest. Who would, if you were to put in a lineup just for funsies, this is just for fun because any of us could get murdered. Doesn't matter. (laughs) But which type would get murdered the easiest? Like if a, like let's say a, okay, let me, let me, let me, let me intervision you right now. Set the, set the framework. If there was a serial killer and they were looking for an easy mark, which type would they choose? I would have to go with a generator. Yes, that is the correct answer. <laughs> because <laughs> you you give them something to respond to and they're no, you're so fine. well, and you're also you have like this energetic, like attractive aura to you. So I no, think those two things. That's I mean, that could be I'm not saying that you're wrong, but that's not what <laughs> I that's not my answer. What do you think? My answer is that we we have routines. We have our most mm. set routines. You could predictable. Fuck up all you have predictable. We are mm. the most predictable of any of the types is the pure generator, right? So all you have to do is follow us. <laughs> I'm like giving people ideas now. All you <laughs> and 
You know, it wouldn't be a manifester because they'd be like, no, no, it would not be. And a projector uh, would be like, let me help you. Yeah. Yeah. It, it would definitely be the generator because all you have to do is follow them for a week, two weeks, a month. You've got their whole routine down, <laughs> all of it. You know exactly what they're doing. You know where they're going. You know mm-hmm. what around the time they wake up, what time they eat lunch probably the 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 lunch spot they like to go to down the street from their job you know everything um so these are the things i think about <laughs> that was um, a good question <laughs> i liked that question um yeah i just wanted to throw a last question at leah she got it right for a different answer see we all have different different views she's over here with hers and i'm like no it's because we're the most routine fucker <laughs> that <laughs> Of, I'm like, oh my God. I was like, think I was, I went I through my day. <laughs> I'm like, I was, that's what I said to myself. I was like, oh my God. I was like, I could be the first in line to get murdered because all you have to do is know my schedule and you know it because I tell you guys <laughs> it all the time and I do it every day. I'm not lying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, then I then I was laughing about myself to myself, and I was like, "This is getting <laughs> creepier by the second. So then I was like, "Let's change our thoughts," and that's what it means to be an open head. Mm-hmm. The things we think about, nothing that matters, or could, because then I could be watching the serial killer watching me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, mm-hmm. we hope you enjoyed the show. Yeah, we hope you did. If you if you did, we would love to hear from you. You can either write mm-hmm. us in, you can send us an email. All that information is down below in the show notes, or you can head over to YouTube and you can write us a comment. We'd love to hear from you guys. And also consider joining the cosmic community. Doors yeah. open February 1st. I just had somebody ask me, actually a couple of people have asked in the last few days because they know it's coming. For some reason, I thought it was this week, but it's not. I <laughs> Yeah, you skipped a week. <laughs> I did. I was like, we're done. Um, <laughs> goodbye, January. See you later. Yes, goodbye. I'm ready for February. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so doors open for the cosmic community. It's a private Facebook group where we have our monthly forecast. Our program plus has moved into there. So you get an entire forecast of all the major players of the month and how to utilize them to your advantage and take aligned action for your month. And then you all, it also comes with a guidebook for rituals, routines, questions, a whole bunch of stuff, grids. We have grids now. And then we do weekly um, memes and um, aura energy updates for each type that also we drop the, the programming partners for that week the sun and earth gates. And then we have discussions about them and each of the types. And it's been a fun conversation every week. Mm -hmm. We get to learn about each other. We get to see who has this gate, who doesn't, how are you experiencing it? I was thinking of doing like weekly wrap ups that we could come back and be like, so now that you've contemplated these two gates and how they might be showing up in your real world, like, let's talk about what happened. What were the experiences? Cause people yeah. are giving, sharing a lot in there and it's yeah. been just really interesting to, to hear people's perspective. So if you're one of those curious people like us or like the people in the group, you also need support. You want to nerd out with us on human design and transits. Mm-hmm. We're the group for you. Um, and then we also have tarot polls that Leah does every week and ties them to a gate. Um, they're always very accurate. They tie in to that month or week for some reason. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of others like beautiful things happening in there. And, um, yeah. we're always dropping extra content gifts. Um, I'll be gifting, uh, a lecture next month on transits. So get in the group February 1st to the 3rd doors close on the third for just the month and then they reopen again the next month just so we can keep track of people easily yep and that's about it with what's going on right now um and give us a big thumbs up on youtube if you're watching us and uh we'll see you over on the next one thanks for being here Bye. bye Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Crystal and I are really here as defined hearts to provide value to you with our unique insights. If you have found any of this episode valuable to you, we ask that you share with a friend, tag us with a highlight on Instagram, and write us a review so we can reach more people. 
Human design and astrology are tools to guide us toward our transformation. You are a unique and beautiful being, and we encourage you to let that light inside of you shine bright. See you in the next episode, friends.